Broadcasting live from the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio inside the Sonesta Gwinnett Place Atlanta Hotel. It's time for Gwinnett Business Radio. And hello again, everybody, and welcome to Gwinnett Business Radio. Mike Salmon alongside Steve and Julian. We think. We're not really sure because reality and virtual reality are kind of meshing today. We're, we're not sure what's real, what's not real, but I think it's Mike and Steven. I, I, and I think we're here. I believe we are in reality. Okay. But we're not sure. Virtual. So we're virtually sure that this is reality. We think we're in the Subaru of Gwinnett Studio. We know we're in the Sinesta Atlantic Gwinnett Place Hotel. But do we? Maybe. Right. Okay. See? The lines are blurred. Man, wow. And the reason we're confused is because McCray Kane is here. He's the CEO and founder of the Digital Media House, and we were doing some virtual reality before the Enhanced show. Enhanced reality, augmented reality, virtual reality. And we're going to talk all about that. Uh, all realities. And then after that, we're going to talk with Mark Johnson about Dump Daddy. I love it. Dump Daddy Dumpster Rentals. Where all old reality and old technology goes to die and be recycled. <laughs> That's bad. Hopefully recycled. <laughs> there you go. So, so Mark, you could take a little bit of a, a rest right now. We're going to talk to McCray for a few minutes here all about the Digital Media House. Uh, McCray, good morning. Good morning. What is the Digital Media House? What does your company do? We'll start with that. So the Digital Media House does pretty much anything digital. That would include branding, creative side, so digital marketing, uh, video production, and what I'm mostly excited about is extended reality services. So you have to define extended reality services. Okay, so extended reality is an umbrella term for a few different type of realities. Virtual reality, augmented and mixed reality. Uh, I won't get into augmented and mixed that much, but virtual reality is what I want to talk about today. So, uh, you know, when when business leaders are listening and they hear branding, graphic design, web development, they're like, OK, I've heard of that. Then you start talking about virtual reality. They might think, well, I'm not a client for that. I don't need that for my business. Talk about who your ideal clients are. And and especially those business owners who are listening, who their first reaction is, eh, I can't afford to do that. Great question. So we still do traditional digital work. So anybody who has any needs, even promotional products, just branding trade show booth designs, all that we still do. But what we're seeing is in the future coming very quickly in the next few years is an application in marketing and uh, commercial applications for virtual reality or extended reality services. So virtual reality, right now, one of the best applications for it is in the architectural and construction industry. One great example is uh, before you start building a building, we can take your 3D models of your CAD drawings and we can do a full, fully immersive two scale 3D virtual reality walkthrough of the building before you start building it. What that allows is architects to catch errors. It allows your client to make decisions before you build something. You have to change it down the line and spend more money. And it allows your contractors to come in and say, hey, I can't build the wall that way or I can't build the roof that way. we got to change it. So it does save a lot of, a lot of error and emissions in projects. It also works in, in uh, co commercial applications for trade show booths. You can do small experiences or large experiences to get people to come to your booth. For example, if we were to be at an expo today as Business Radio X, we could have a virtual reality, uh, a virtual reality studio there, mapped exactly as here physically, and you could be interviewing somebody at that location remotely, or you could be somewhere else interviewing a person at that location as well. So that's the idea. For augmentative, you can do sales pitches, so you can use a device like a phone or a tablet and have some sort of trigger, such as a business card or, or a portfolio book and models can come off of it. They can walk around and explain things to you, and they'll do a sales pitch for you. That can be done at an expo or an intimate personal sales pitch. You know, we, we, we talk about agencies like yours, and you do all the stuff that a typical marketing agency would do. You do branding and graphic design, video production, web development, uh, things like that. But this is the exciting stuff. This is the yeah. future, if you will. Talk about the cost a little bit, because I know some folks will say, okay, as, as Stephen said, well, I'm not a client for that, because probably I probably can't afford it, but it, you might be surprised. Yeah, great question. So we work around budgets, but depending on the amount of work we put into it and depending on the circumstances of the, we call it the experience, we could be a couple grand or it could be a couple hundred grand. You know, how, how engaging are we making it? Is it a, an experience where you're heavy lifting uh, equipment such as a, an excavator and you're filling dump trucks and racing another person who's on the other side of you the first person who fills up dump trucks you know wins a, a prize and you have a leaderboard and a database storing all that that scoring that's a way more expensive 
experience than just taking the 3D model, dropping it in, and you walking around the a flat textured walls and flat flat lighting. That's a lot cheaper. So it really depends on the application. And the best thing for us is what is the budget you're working for and what are you trying to accomplish? And either we can fit that or we can do a phase scope approach. It all just depends. But I do that with any of my services. And you can get really intensive because, Stephen, before the show, you were throwing paper airplanes. Yeah. So you, you can actually pick up things and move yeah, things around. Absolutely. Yeah. So so the, it, it, do you mind me describing my experience? Please Cause, do. Because you're in it every day. Please and this do. was my first experience. So it's completely immersive where you have you have something over your head, but you can turn 360. Um, that it also has a little bit of protection because it's encouraging you to move around in certain scenarios. But if you move too far, kind of out of the boundaries, then cameras on the outside of the headset will kind of pop up to just kind of show you, hey, watch out, you're about to walk so into you, a wall. Right. But when you're in the experience and you're walking around within the range, uh, I had something on both my hands, the ability to... Uh, make a fist, the ability to pick up with index and thumb, the ability to, you know, of course, pull triggers, the ability to, to um, you know, pick up air paper airplanes, pick up blocks, uh, pick up a gun and fire it. I, I mean, it was a laser gun, of course, but I mean, it was really cool um, and, and very, very immersive and, and front and back and up and down. I mean, it's it's just it was very interesting. And so uh, that let, I'm going to after my description, uh, McCray, I want to kind of ask the question. Um, it's it's also part of your job is to kind of almost convince business owners of the way the many different ways they can use this. That's right. Um, so a lot of this is is education. What are you finding uh, is the best ways for you to to educate kind of the the business public about all the different applications they can they can be using this for? Great question, and it is the great challenge we have right now because everybody says, "Oh, virtual reality. What do I need that for? It's video games, and nobody wants to use that. You know, whatever." And to a degree, they're right because the technology is so new; it's not fully commercialized yet, but it will be soon. If you think about six years ago for the web development world, or even eight years ago, people would say do you want a mobile responsive website when you build your website? That was an option back then. Now it's not. If you don't have it, you get docked by Google in other, in other ways. And plus, there's this poor uh, user experience because of the amount of mobile devices out there. Well, I think three to five years from now, I truly believe that they'll be asking you, is your website VR compatible? Firefox, has, which is Mozilla, Firefox has released a Firefox reality app that you can use in these headsets now that will take you into a website with a screen, but you can click on Engage VR and using technology called Web VR, you can build out a full 3D immersive experience like you guys experienced for anything you want to build out. And your belief is that the, the headsets we had on the Oculus, I guess is the, the, right. the term everybody kind of knows, um, that's going to be about as standard as having a gaming system in your house. Absolutely. You, you, okay, so that's on the way. Absolutely. And so if I want to be on the cutting edge as a business owner, I can make my website be wonderful, but then I can also prepare it for this next phase of VR and have it even now that's right. for people who have those devices. Um, what's, the, what's the penetration right now in the general public of having some kind of device that would be able to look at a at a VR website? Is it is it very small? Is it growing huge, but still kind of small? Talk to me it's about It's just that. getting started. Okay. So this technology that you guys experience today is the Oculus, but it's particularly the Oculus Quest. Okay. And old technology, you had to have a separate computer. You had to have a cable or a wireless battery system to connect to the computer. You had to have tracking towers to move around and kind of see where you're at. So you, you can only go so far with that. This technology has the, the device or the computer built into the device. It's an Android operating system. It does geospatial recognition, so you don't have to have towers. It's, it's fully immersive, and you can do an unlimited distance. As a developer, we can turn off that guardian wall you guys saw, and you can walk as limited distance as you want. So Facebook is driving this, and that's why I believe so much it's going to work. Facebook bought this technology in 2014 for $2.5 billion. They're not playing around. They're going to make this happen. They already have virtual reality chat rooms that you connect your profile to, and you can engage with people on social chat rooms, right? So they're pushing this. Now, over Christmas, it was almost impossible to get these headsets from them because they were sold out so fast so long. It is getting bigger. Now, it is new, like all new technology. There's a early adopters, and there's the you know, so on and so forth. Right now, we're hitting that consumer face. This, the most expensive hard drive size for this headset is 500 bucks. 
it's no different than buying a PlayStation, you know, for hardcore very, gamers. Very reasonable cost for what you're getting. Uh, for yeah, yeah, if you get in this thing and you see how immersive it is, it's not like the Gear VR or a phone Google Cardboard. It's not even near. What about that. the old fashioned PlayStation 3D or the the old <laughs> old old PlayStation that you played the tennis on and stuff? Anyway, so. yeah, no, it's it's as you guys can attest, it's yeah. far more no, immersive. No, you than that. you felt like you were real. You were immersed in it, like you say. And you gave it a great example earlier. If you're a contractor engineer and you want to see the building before you build it and walk through the building and catch. Mm-hmm mistakes i can see like a, a realtor you go you know mm-hmm. you go on the site and you are it's, it's a virtual site and you're able to actually walk through a house that's on the market you know i mean so i can see this expanding into Absolutely. different areas yeah. so the website is the one scenario i think the other scenario is if you have people coming to your location whether it's an office or mm-hmm. you talked about a an expo booth kind of making your expo it, it greatly enhancing the traffic at an expo booth or greatly enhancing the experience of someone in your office to do something virtually you That's know right. this this is the next wave of of having a meeting oh well, oh we'll put it on facetime no no let, or a web chat no this is let's literally chat virtually in the same Absolutely. room businesses will also change to have virtual conferences yeah. business rooms as well so you know you asked me before one of the challenges really it's, it's all about creative application and because it's so new, the ideas haven't started yet, right? Like the internet, when it came out, what do you use the internet for? Well, good Lord, look at you. The first thing everything. I ever used the internet for was to find the script of Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And I thought it was amazing that <laughs> there you I could go. find this online circa 1995. And now your whole life is online. Uh, right, yeah. exactly. So it's the same idea with any kind of new technology. Well, how do you use it? Well, time will tell us. But, you know, one thing that I do to help overcome that hurdle is I sit down and consult with a client and say, well, let's come up with some ideas. You know, how can a restaurant use a VR application at an expo? Well, easy. You can go to your trade booth, right? So if I'm a patron, I go to your booth. I put on the headset. I play a quick two, three-minute game. I might be competing against somebody else in the game with me or a computer version of somebody else in the game with me. And maybe I'm in a kitchen and tickets come out of the system. It says, make a hamburger, make a this, right? So I got these little quick and easy things to put together and I got to put it on the counter and hit the bell and whoever can do it the fastest or however many I could do before the time runs out then I get a prize or half off the restaurant or buy one get one free you start promotion that well what's great about it is you can also capture your audience data that way so I got to fill out a consent form and I got to put my email and my phone number and all that so now you have my data right also because you can stream this it could be on a TV at the booth so patrons who are walking around can be gathering as a captive audience and watching this individual play this experience. It's a restaurant, but that's how it can work, and it can work for any industry. I think the ideas are, are limitless. That's right. I'm sure other companies are getting into this. Obviously, there's a lot of, I assume, growing competition out there. So how, how do you how do you um, place yourself so you're maybe a little bit different from all those competitors out there, and, and what could become a very crowded marketplace? Great question. So right now, there's not a whole lot of competitors in the commercial side. Most of them, it's like the film industry. Everybody goes into film to make movies, not TV commercials. Some people go out to make TV commercials. That's where a lot of the money is, because the big money is in movies, right? Game gaming's the same way. Big money's in gaming. In fact, gaming grosses more than the movie industry right now, and is rapidly getting faster. But everybody wants to go into making video games, but not a whole lot of people want to sit back and say, how can I apply this to a business or a commercial application? That's where I am separating myself with this technology. And I think it, it, it also sounds like, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like one of the best things a business owner listening can think about is, is kind of the sky's the limit. You're almost willing to hear from their ideas. Hey, what are you looking for? What do you want to accomplish? I mean, I know every business owner says, I want to increase sales. I want to increase engagement. I want to, you know, all that. So they know more about the biz, their business than you do. You know more about how to make it enhanced reality, virtual reality. So start a conversation and see where it leads. Right? Absolutely. It's very collaborative. Very collaborative. Now to put out there, anybody who wants to compete with me, I do white label. Ah, So we are either a transparent or a white label partnership. We work with a lot of agencies right now that white label us. Some of them transparent. It just depends. So we call ourselves a digital media house intentionally because it's kind of a generic Acme type name. So we're a digital media house. So it's kind of, you know, so work the, with us. We so want to collaborate. Yeah, the other agencies can come up with their own ideas and white label. They don't need to go put the investment into the technology. You can help with That's that. right. For any of my services, yeah. I, I work with other people very well. For someone that would like to find out more about this and, and kind of experience it a little bit, is there a way they can experience it or they should it, it, it they should have been at the studio today to yeah. do what we did? <laughs> That's right. Just get with you and maybe there's a way they can experience it and just have that collaboration at first? Absolutely. I'm it, very personal. We'll come down, talk to you. And talk about somebody. Is there a cost for that for that meeting? No, not at all. 
Okay. For those that would like to look into this a little bit more and find out more, how can they find out more? Not 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 just about digital media um, house, but about about virtual reality and so forth. I guess they could just look it up and do some research. Yeah. If you do some research, make sure you look into the Oculus Quest because that's so spell good. spell that Oculus. O C U L U S. Yeah. Okay. You're on the spot there. What if I, I know? What if I got that the wrong? Look on your face right there. <laughs> Whew, I was thinking sweating. one C or two Cs. <laughs> the spelling bee over the here. Radio X spelling bee <laughs> has started. Yeah. And, so. Okay. And your website for those that would like, is there some stuff on your website too uh, that they could check out? Yes, they could check out my website and see the services. But a lot of our portfolio, because a lot is white labeled and I'm under NDAs, I don't put a lot up there. But you can call me and talk to me and we can get some ideas and show you some things on our end. Ex explain the concept of white label for those that are not familiar. So white labeling is you call me, you, we would contract a project together and you would put your brand on it and tell your client that it's yours. Or you can pull me in as a subcontractor and say, hey, this is our partner and it goes through you either way. But white labeling is the easiest way to do it. We just put your company logo on it. You just claim it as your businesses, no big deal. Mike, this might be the greatest tease in the history of our program. We've we've asked these, you've, we've tacked on all these extra questions and all these different ways people need to contact you. Give the phone number. It, okay. Everybody's dying for it. So that's the second spot, right? So <laughs> if I can remember it, no, I'm just kidding. 770-835-5960. And it's the digitalmediahouse.com. Yes, sir. All right, McRae Kane, the uh, CEO and founder. Thank you so much for joining us, and, and thanks for the virtual experience this morning. That was awesome. It re you. really was it, cool. It was fantastic. And, and to see Steve, because I've done it once before, but to see Steven's reaction, because you've never it was done great. it. was great. Mouth agape uh, <laughs> and, and just just figuring out what was going on. That was virtual reality, and it was very real. And I got some video of it, by the way. I'll, oh, fantastic. I'll send it to oh, you. And I can tell you something you don't know until you experience it exactly i totally agree with that statement mike that interview was very loquacious please spell loquacious before i give our <laughs> g-o-o-d <laughs> very good all right i uh, want to remind everybody that uh, gwinnett business radio does uh, take place in the subaru of gwinnett studios love is what makes a subaru a subaru get big savings and enjoy their hassle-free experience at subaru of gwinnett where people sell cars visit subaru of gwinnett.com join their family today Come in and see the difference. If you're already a Subaruist, then look for Subaru of Gwinnett's Facebook page and Instagram posts and LinkedIn and all the other social media sites for the latest Subaru offers news and community events. All right. We're going from technology to dumpsters. But I think this is going to be just as a, a fascinating interview as, as the first one. Mark Johnson is with us with Dump Daddy Dumpster Rentals. Good morning. Good morning, Mark. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thank how'd you for having you get, me on. How did you get into the dumpster business and tell me what you do exactly? I've been asking my same, myself the same question for Every the last day, eight yeah. or nine months. Uh, but no, I, um, I have a construction background and a friend of mine, the owner, Dale, um, came to me and said, I have this idea of this business and didn't tell me what it was. I went in and sat with them and um, being a contractor and a, and a roofing background, it was, uh, it was only natural. We'd have, you know, 10 of these rented around the, the uh, city a, a given week and um, it made sense to, to manufacture them instead. Um, so they, we saw a niche for residents that needed a, a driveway safe. Most of the, dump when you think dumpsters, you think these big, big giant funky, things, yeah, yeah. rusty and you know, damaging your driveway and, you know, leaving trakes of mud. Well, we have a very um, attractive, shiny black dumpster that goes on a driveway protection system or drivers sweep up afterwards. It's a, it's more of a concierge service um, that's residential friendly. So how, how big are these residential dumpsters that people can rent? We have three sizes, a 10 yard, 15 yard and 20 yard. And to put that in comparison, mm -hmm. as I drive by a typical construction site and see the big giant, commercial right. how big are those those are 30 or 40 yards okay. so they're about half the size but more importantly they're half the length so they fit into a parking spot and that was really the key that's it we okay. have so much work that we do down in brookhaven and buckhead where these residents these townhomes and and various they don't want to take up their entire you know seven eight spots still got to park right. the cars and then the same with the residents they and you said you have to you know give up their entire driveway to um, have a construction project on a kitchen remodel or a right. bathroom remodel. And and that's where people would use these, I mean, give some of the reasons why people would need your services. Well, we get trash, a lot of calls for... Lots of trash. <laughs> uh, we get a lot of divorce questions thinking that we can get rid of their, you know, their husband. You know, it's not a place to dump your daddy. It's a place to get rid of your clutter that's in your garage or your basement. So like Guido calls. I got some uh, bodies here. I got to kind of make disappear. Forget Guido. Mrs. Johnson calls and says, Mr. I Johnson. need to... 
<laughs> my mom's name's Mrs. Martin. Roberts, but she uh, she divorced my. Di- she got rid of the Johnson about twenty years ago. <laughs> but the legal the legal reasons would right. be. Uh, well, you got to ask remodel. my friend Gary Martin Hayes for any illegal content, you know that. Uh, As compared to illegal, right. right? So remodels and things like that. Yeah, uh, small remodels. So we're not looking to you know the dumpster, twenty cubic yards. You know, is only twelve feet long, eight feet wide, eight feet tall. So and it's you, not for a full house to be completely gutted, and then it's for, you know, kitchen cabinets and counters. You know, um, now you could, of course, on the larger projects, have multiple dumpsters delivered. But sure. the the idea is something that's about the size of a U- SUV or a van, or a van that's going to you know take up one spot in your driveway and not, you know, be a eyesore and and sit there for a month. You know, gotcha. with your HOA com- writing you letters right. and finding you every day. Or you could have a virtual dumpster that you think is there, and you're throwing all the trash in the virtual dumpster, and then you've got this thing. Yeah, you, can, you got so. a pile yeah. of trash. Yeah. No, Mark deals in re- in in real reality of it real is, trash and and uh, real problems that need to be taken away. It is quite realistic. <laughs> yes, uh, it's been you know you an interesting half a year. You mentioned that you are you ma- you're actually manufacturing the dumpsters. Yes, so we you're not just you're not just, Georgia. you're not just buying them and then I mean you're, you're well, why did you decide to actually manufacture them as opposed to just purchasing them to rent them out? Uh, excellent question. We had um, kind of a concept of what was wrong with the other dumpsters. Um, a lot of the dumpsters that you could purchase. A dumpster's a dumpster, Mark. It, it's no. not, though. Really? Oh, They have a 45-degree angle on the side, so you only have a small track to run, you know, walk oh. down the middle. So they, what they do, it's called a bathtub style. So it's very difficult to load those. Ours have a, um, a, a full-size door for easy walk-in loading. So we found that when you have, you know, a, a good 45-degree angle coming down, it's very difficult to load those as a homeowner. It's easy for a contractor because you just have a you know skid steer or a back you know bobcat taking and dumping it over right. So this is um, you know a easier dumpster to load for you know a grandma getting rid of you know clutter. Well, well let me ask you about that because the dumpsters w- that I'm used to, you see the construction ones. Mm-hmm. You've got to be if you've got some f- I don't know small piece of furniture or something, you still got to lift it up and get it over. Nope. And you're saying what a grandma can do it. Ha- whether there's little secret panels we can go in through the a side. Door. Or? There's no, a door. The the entire back of the dumpster opens up, so nice. you just walk right in like a. You, you can know. walk into your dumpster. Yeah, it's only about an eight, you know, six inch, less than a step up. You know, so if you could walk up to your front doorstep, you could walk into one of our dumpsters. Easier to put trash in the dumpster than to get it out of your doorway of your house. It is fantastic yeah um the, the door is eight feet wide and the typical engagement of of one of these what's the minimum amount of time i can rent one what's the maximum amount of time so we focus on short rentals yeah. because our primary target are the homeowners that don't want to have a dumpster sitting in their driveway taking up a spot contractors doing small projects like the bathrooms and um, kitchen remodels but also the re-roofers our 20 yard, our 15 yard dumpster is perfect for 50 squares or less so for those roofers that want something delivered the night before or early that morning they're going to strip that roof they want it loaded they want it out of there so our rentals are three-day rentals and so that way we could turn our inventory and it's not sitting out there as an eyesore in the neighborhood Um, they can contractors we typically will extend it out for seven days without an additional fee but we typically charge ten dollars a day beyond three days okay and that includes so for our 10 yard it's only 295 dollars for the th- for the three day for the three days okay it's delivered you get four thousand pounds or two tons of disposable waste we pick it up you're done a 15 yard includes six thousand pounds and our 20 yard includes um, three and a half tons or seven thousand pounds and focus a little more you started the interview talking about the driveway concierge service I think yeah. I said that correctly so talk about the drivers and and how they you know clean up after after they're picking up and what we what we found as contractors engaged with dumpster companies the communication you know it'll get there when it gets there right it's the you know you see right now the amazon delivery versus the ups versus the fedex versus the postal service you know you got you know amazon's coming in your door and setting it up for you whereas you know you know another service might get there when it gets there so we had that experience speak your mind it's okay mark so what we wanted to do differently under the dumpster if you want we (laughs) They don't have to under. They got the door, and it's oh, just okay. a one-inch step, a six-inch step up. I'm sorry. Go you ahead. You can throw into the ten yard. The ten yards, <laughs> you know, a little bit shorter. So if you did want to, you know, do just some dumpster diving, you can certainly. Uh, we uh, interrupted a great story. Stop this it! Whole right. interview is becoming a dumpster fire. <laughs> oh it, man. <laughs> um, so what we um, 
what we found was we're paying for driveways, you know, to, to get re, you know, resurfaced or, um, you know, that get, it gets cracked. So as a contractor, that's a nightmare. The other thing that's a nightmare is on roofers, uh, a roofing project, you're getting flat tires, you're paying for the homeowner to, you know, get a new tire. So um, what we wanted to do differently was call the homeowner 30 minutes in advance, let them know it's on its way so that there was, you know, communication. There's constant communication via email and text, notifying the homeowner of when it's getting picked up. And um, um, the driver also puts down boards. We have special design boards that have um, basically chop blocks at each end so the dumpster doesn't roll off of them. It's set down at both ends of the dumpster so that way the dumpster never touches the concrete or the asphalt. And then finally, when it gets picked up, our drivers are required to take pictures of the, the driveway before and after. And if, they're, if it is a roofing job, a lot of times those you know, nails will roll under a dumpster you know, pieces of metal that, that are dangerous for, you know, for a tire. So the last thing a contractor wants to hear is, you know, because they could do a perfect job, beautiful job, but at the end the, the wife gets a flat tire and, you know, they get a, you know, a bad review. Nasty gram. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So those are some of the, you know, dump daddy difference, you know, that we feel um, has our clients choose us. The dump daddy difference. I like that. The D cubed. 3D. Yeah. Yes. 3D. Right. Question I've never I've I've never just happened to think of and I've never thought about this is typically when I've used a service like yours and you take the trash away, mm-hmm. I've never ever thought of you know, that's the last I thought of it. Yeah. Where do you, where do you take all this trash? Virtual reality. <laughs> Sorry. So um there's in the industry there's there's landfills and then there's transfer stations. Okay. So it really depends on um we try and go to recycling centers as much as possible you know, depending on the material that's, you know, being disposed of. If there is somebody that's doing a clean out, I, I try and provide them a, uh, a number that, you know, a piece of furniture can be donated to a woman's shelter or something like that. But majority of the, the waste will go to either a landfill or to a transfer station, which then gets transported to another landfill. So some of this is also, especially when you're dealing with the general public who doesn't do a lot of contracting work and, and mm-hmm. only cleans out their garage once every 10 years or so, um, there's a little bit of education on, on your part to kind of go, hey, make sure, uh, it, it, can you tell them to separate what can be recycled and what can be sent to the dump? Is is that part of the service? I wish it, I wish it was that easy, Yeah, honestly, um, because, but a lot of the, especially some of the recycling centers that we go to, they do the sorting there. Okay. So they have okay. systems where it kind of gets funneled out and it okay. gets, um, it gets sorted. Um. It's easier when it's inert waste, which is typically your concrete or your, um, you know, earth-based um, um, disposal. So we can go to a place that'll grind down the trees and make mulch, or they'll, um, you know, bust up the concrete and reuse that. Asphalt shingles can get recycled and you know be used for um, roadway, you know, roadways. So it's um, when somebody's moving. And they're they have it's a stressful enough situation to get everything out. Right. Or if somebody's a hoarder and doesn't want to get rid of boxes that have not been opened in ten years, like myself. Why are you looking at me when you say that? I, <laughs> well, you're sitting in front of me. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, um, but no, it's it's a it's usually not under the best you know right calm circumstances that somebody's renting one of these. You know, their house is being you know full of dust because their kitchen is now being you know completely remodeled and torn apart and you know it's it's a stressful situation so the last thing i want to do is you know tell them to sort the the cans from the glass you know mark is not allowed to live by the phrase out of sight out of mind (laughs) he has to deal with it all the way through to completion and make sure it's done correctly wow you are located in swanee but talk about your service area how far do you go thank you for asking because right now being as being a startup we are looking to expand and and grow and franchise out but um, as a new company being, you know, uh, less than a year old, we just service basically from Atlanta around I, uh, highway 20 in the Northern suburbs. So we'll go up 75 and 575 across the Gainesville and Lake Lanier and down and through the Gwinnett County area. Um, we kind of cut off towards the Gainesville Conyers area and, and South Atlanta. And depending on when people listen to this interview and and check the date, if it's been 6 to 12 months, certainly check again because if you're growing the way you guys do this, 
pretty soon it'll be spreading to other areas, I'm sure. Absolutely. Um, I, obviously, you want to get to know the contractors. You want to get to know the people doing the, the, the jobs that aren't full remodels of entire houses, right. but right where your sweet spot is. Is this something that I, as a homeowner, uh, I can request whoever I bring in to do a job? Hey, would you call these guys? I'd like you to use them because I want to make sure that – get that into my price of my job because I want to make sure and do this well. Yeah, we found a lot of the uh, the homeowners are getting you know taken care of the dumpster yeah. themselves. Oh, so okay. they're renting. You know, so okay. they've got the contractor. Some of them will have a, a a dump trailer that they pull behind their their truck, but that's it's complicated for that contractor to to function or to to manage that process because the the landfills close at four thirty. Right. So a lot of them, a lot of those projects, they're not getting off the job site until six or seven o'clock. So, and they don't realize that there isn't exactly a cost savings i mean they could be paying 86 you know 75 to 100 dollars a a ton at the landfill and then you know the the gas and the time to send a project manager over there so i uh, we found that the contractors like that and that's a lot of our repeat repeat business because the homeowners honestly how many how many times did you rent a dumpster mike once 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 right yeah so our cost of how did you know that because i you just I had just that look in my eye. Okay, you, you kind of had to look in the eye. That you're you know. scaring me now. Okay, because he knows you're a hoarder, and he knows that only happens <laughs> once, and then you learn from your mistake, right? Uh, you that's uh, that's correct. <laughs> no, I mean I always go back to that George Carlin skit. I don't know if you remember the, yeah, the stuff, right? Yeah, so yeah. we always, uh, you know, we want we need to get a bigger house, you know, for all our There's stuff, more stuff, and then you get more stuff. Yeah. So that's <laughs> kind of our culture, you know. Um, so it's a um, everybody needs. You know, at least once. But yeah. the contractors are the ones, the roofers are the ones that are coming back to us time and time again. We love your service. We love having, you know, that peace of mind knowing that you're going to sweep up after. We know that you're not going to crack the driveway and we're going to have to pay for a new, you know, concrete pad. So those are the, um, those are really the, you know, my hope with Radio Business X to touch those contractors yeah. and touch those business owners that, you know, will use us 10 times a week. You know. I, I was thinking of the sign. Instead, I, I know the Carlin stuff. That's a great one. I was thinking of Seinfeld, who said that uh, once things leave your house, they go to the garage, which is one letter away from garbage. <laughs> that so, is true. Yeah. Gotcha. Uh, I do want to ask you before we let you go, Mark, as we're starting to wrap things up. Dump. I'm surprised with a new being a newer business that Dump Daddy was not already being used, just because it just sounds kind of cool. But tell me the the planning behind the name Dump Daddy. So. Um, we get that question a lot and we get people that engage in our social media and and call us just because of the name not because they need a dumpster but they're like oh that's you know it's hilarious plus our our dumpsters are fully branded with the dump daddy name on the Mrs. On the Smith sides. calling are you a divorce attorney is that what you do so they love it so you know I have friends when we first started getting started dump you daddy know, that yeah, would have dump a mommy if you want to dump your daddy you know call mark you know ex-girlfriends sent, you know made some jokes about you know dump so it was you deal with a lot of people that are going through a lot of emotional toil it is it is a um <laughs> it's been fascinating you know i could write a book um you know on some of the experiences become a licensed but, counselor and really help people I'm sorry, but to ahead. answer your um but to your answer to the question the owner's wife came up with the the name and um i'm not sure what was going on in their marriage at the time but you know she <laughs> takes credit for the uh the name dump daddy and i give her credit all the time for such a fantastic um idea and maybe somebody had it before and they just got rid of it threw it away we need a rim shot for that right there where's the rim shot <laughs> there we go there we go <laughs> yeah okay i just um, wanted to keep this the garbage fire as you mark you know before fire. the show mark's like you know how serious are you guys can i be funny and i was like you have no idea what you've walked into here we right. make sure that we're not funny but try to be and that makes the guests in funnier. my virtual world i am funny oh, all the wow. time okay yeah so are we really here i'm sorry mark i just i keep saying i'm sorry <laughs> Mark, for those that would like to use your services, they want to dump daddy or there's right. a divorce going on or a breakup or something horrible in their life and they just need that dumpster. Oh, spring cleaning. Come on. Keep it positive. What's the website? Dumpdaddy.com. And from there, they can they can schedule and get everything they yep, need. There's an the online website. form. Like they it. could also call us locally at uh, 678-765-2841. Or we have an 800 number that's kind of catchy, the 833 Dump Daddy. And if if people call and and they go, oh, have you ever been asked about this or ever asked? You've heard all the questions already. So if they get a new question you've never heard, 
Maybe it's like I'll buy you a cup of coffee at Starbucks if you give me a quick. Don't. I'm just kidding. I could. Don't do I, I need more material from. Do you? Okay. All right. Know, there you certainly. go. There so. you go. Mark, thank you for joining us. Thank uh, you for having continued me. Continued success. We wish you all the best, and I hopefully it. we'll have you back in a couple of years, and you can kind of give us an update on how Dump Daddy's going. I would love that. All right, Mark Johnson with Dump Daddy Dumpster Rentals. It's uh, dumpdaddy.com or the 800 number, 833-4-DUMP-DADDY. I like that. Yep, so thank you so much to uh, Mark for joining us and also McCray Kane for joining us with the Digital Media House. So, Any- Mike, are we here or not? I have no idea. Let's just go ahead and get out of it. Please be sure to follow us on social media at Gwinnett Radio X. Until next time, let's just say goodbye. Goodbye. Mike, Steven, see you next time here on Business Radio X. Uh, uh, uh.